God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that all who believe in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Today is Tuesday, December 29th, the fifth day within the octave of the Nativity of the Lord. Mass this morning is offered for the repose of the souls of Leo and Rose Becker. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and invisible God, who dispersed the darkness of this world by the coming of your light, Look, we pray, with serene countenance upon us, that we may acclaim with fitting praise the greatness of the nativity of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, the way we may be sure that we know Jesus is to keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. This is the way we may know that we are in union with him. Whoever claims to abide in him ought to walk just as he walked. Beloved, I am writing no new commandment to you, but an old commandment that you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard, and yet I do not write a new commandment to you, which holds true in him and among you. For the darkness is passing away, and the true light is already shining. Whoever says he is in the light, yet hates his brother, is still in the darkness. Whoever loves his brother remains in the light, and there is nothing in him to cause a fall. Whoever hates his brother is in darkness. He walks in darkness and does not know where he is going, because the darkness has blinded his eyes. The Word of the Lord. Thanks. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. 
Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. The Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty go before him. Praise and grandeur are his sanctuary. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Your blessing, Father. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you may proclaim his gospel worthily and well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. A light of revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people, Israel. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you. When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, this man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that it will be contradicted. And you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody, and thanks for being here this morning uh, as we continue our way through the octave of Christmas, and we receive this gospel today, which we also received a couple of days ago on the Feast of the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, uh, and lots of places to go here, uh, but one of them that I continue to be struck by uh, is just the fidelity of the Holy Family. Uh, and so as we open here, we, we see that Mary and Joseph are bringing the child Jesus to the temple, uh, and then that they make an offering uh, in accordance with the law of the Lord uh, of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Uh, and this is something that's coming to them uh, from the book of the law of Leviticus uh, on purification following childbirth. Uh, and so Leviticus 12, 6 and following, and when the days of her purifying are completed, whether for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring to the priest at the door of the tent of meeting a lamb a year old for a burnt offering, and a young pigeon or a turtle dove for a sin offering, and he shall offer it before the Lord and make atonement for her, and then she shall be clean. This is the law for her who, her who bears a child, either male or female. And if she cannot afford a lamb, then she shall take two turtle doves or two young pigeons, one for a burnt offering and the other for a sin offering. And the priest shall make atonement for her and she shall be clean. 
Uh, and a couple of things that really strike me here, uh, uh, again, this fidelity or humility or obedience, if we consider who Mary is and who Jesus is especially, uh, given that she is the immaculate conception, uh, the one who is without spot, without wrinkle, the one who we might say is clean and perfectly so. Uh, if there's anybody who could ever said, I get a pass on this one, uh, it would be Mary. Uh, and yet she goes and fulfills the law of the Lord. I just think about how important that is, uh, perhaps for us personally, but certainly for us generally in this day, uh, when we can often sort of say, well, I don't need to do that. I hear this sort of most frequently with the sacrament of confession. I don't, I don't need that. Um, and yet there's a precept uh, of the church that we confess our sins in the sacrament at least once a year. Uh, and so something in here about uh, asking the intercession of the Holy Family, uh, just that we would have more and more embrace of fulfilling the obligations of our faith, even if we don't think they apply to us, uh, that in that humility, in that going out to offer what the Lord has asked, uh, there's great merit for us, and as it turns out, we all do need it, <laughs> uh, but to be able to, to be faithful as Mary and Joseph were. Uh, and then the second thing uh, about this is just if we're attentive, uh, we notice that for those who could afford it, the offering would be a lamb and then a dove or a pigeon, but those who could not afford it could offer two turtle doves or two pigeons. Uh, and so we get insight here into the poverty of the Holy Family. Uh, and poverty is often something that we rail against with our everything. We, we want nothing to do with poverty, but uh, we see in this that poverty is uh, not altogether contrary to or offensive to the Christian life. Jesus Christ, in addition to uh, the humility and weakness that he showed in coming to us as a child, uh, also came to us as a poor child. Uh, and so there's something of a call to poverty for all of us to embrace. Uh, not to embrace a destitution or to seek that out, but poverty. And we also see in this that poverty is not an excuse to not make an offering to the Lord. Uh, and this is something that we'll see through the gospel. You think of the widow's might that she gave from her poverty and how pleasing that was uh, to the Lord. And so, just a, a prayer here that we might embrace whatever sort of poverty it is that we have in our lives, and maybe it is monetary. Uh, and we can embrace that and be one with the Holy Family in that. But there are other sorts of poverty that we might have. Um, this idea that I'm not as holy as other people or as disciplined or as, as other people. Or uh, I can't speak in the way that other people can speak. There's poverty in all of those things. Uh, but none of them an excuse not to make an offering to the Lord from that place of poverty. So we might pray that we can take a cue here from the Holy Family as well. Uh, and whatever our poverty is, to give to the Lord out of it. And so Mary and Joseph today with the child Jesus, uh, showing us obedience to the law, uh, an embrace of poverty, a desire to be generous with the Lord, even with what they don't have. Uh, and then in everything that follows, uh, we see what a blessing this is. Uh, to those around them. And so our own obedience and our own embrace of poverty and giving from it can bring blessings to others in addition to ourselves.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Of the spirit and contract heart, and will be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. And Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this awe filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours, and begotten before all ages, has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation, and call strained humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and Andrew, his assistant, and all those who hold him to the truth and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise or the offer for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day, on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Prasadimus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, 
all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel, to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. In this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. O oh, Jesus Christ, I pray for judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for me protection of mind and body, and the human remedy. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should have turned my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. In the body of Christ, be saved for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Through the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will visit us. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by the power of these holy mysteries, our life may be constantly sustained through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Paul, praise be Jesus Christ. Amen.